because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves and immortality. The mystery of death is definitely a fascination for me, just as it has been for all civilizations of the world since the beginning of time. We just don't know what happens. It's a deep mystery that all humanity strives to come to terms with, and this accounts for the abundance of religions and mythologies that have tried to provide answers to this question. It is truly a great mystery and something that I often think about and as a result is something that has had a profound impact on the kind of work I create. Through his drawings and paintings, artist Brandon Maldonado reveals to us a magical world filled with mysteries and wonders. Upon deeper inspection, we see that this is not a foreign world far off in a distant solar system, but rather it is the world within us. The turmoil of mankind's internal struggles with both our greatest fears and our greatest hopes. Calling himself the painter of poetry, Brandon Maldonado's canvas acts as his personal diary, giving the work a strong sense of vulnerability through his depictions of universal human emotions, such as loneliness, grief, and hope. Growing up in the early 80s, I was surrounded by skeletons and monsters. Whether it was Michael Jackson's thriller or my Skeletor action figure, I remember having a deep fascination in the darker side of things, as probably most young boys did. So logically, my drawings consisted mainly of this kind of subject matter. By the time I was around 10, I got into skateboards. The major skateboard brand at the time was Pal Peralta. Most of their graphics were of skulls and skeletons, and that stuff really blew my mind. Skateboarding exposed me to this whole underground culture that included breakdancing, gangster rap, and graffiti, which became most influential to me. There was something very real to it for me. It was both edgy and defiant, but at the same time very beautiful. Growing up in Albuquerque, New Mexico, just a stone's throw away from the mega art market of Santa Fe, Brandon did not feel a connection to the landscapes and western scenes that saturated the highbrow art scene. These depictions were a far cry from the reality of the graffiti-filled neighborhood of his youth. Graffiti would serve as a means of artistic expression for him throughout his teen years, an influence that can still be seen in his artworks today. It was the big-headed characters and often distorted anatomy that made a big impact on me, as well as the in-your-face boldness of the lettering. I found graffiti to be a great outlet for my creativity. It wasn't really until I was in college that I began to understand and appreciate the works of the old masters, but once the floodgate opened, I began to create a bridge between the two worlds in my work. When Maldonado was 24 years old, he began to learn the medium of the old masters, oil painting. The medium had always been intimidating to him due to his colorblindness and lack of any formal training. But under the guide of established Mexican painter Ricardo Chavez Mendez, Brandon would develop his own technique and find inspiration in the painting medium's endless possibilities. He would also become inspired by the pantheon of painters who came before him and reinterpret the great themes of classical painting such as the creation of the universe. and resurrection. Maldonado's interpretation of these themes would also be heavily influenced by the mythologist Joseph Campbell, whose work in the field of religion and mythology would provide him with an alternative interpretation to the symbols of myth and religion, rather than the purely literal reading of these stories Maldonado was taught on Sundays in the Catholic Church. For Campbell, these symbols speak on a universal level of mankind's need to understand the nature of the world and to ultimately affirm life with both its joys and suffering. I was working on the preliminary drawing for the painting Schism. 
It was inspired by a recent breakup, so I had drawn this figure playing the violin and crying a sea of tears all around her. It seemed so dark and hopeless and compositionally something felt missing. My mind kept thinking of a reoccurring theme that Joseph Campbell found in his studies. Specifically the idea that from death comes life. We simply have to look to the processes of nature to understand how we're constantly experiencing this concept all around us. And that became the catalyst for including the roses in the painting. Where the term rose period for Picasso referred to the color palette the artist was using. For Maldonado, the rose period works consist of paintings that literally depict roses. This series of paintings would be a departure from the artist's previous works. Keeping in line with Joseph Campbell's ideas of universal symbols, I wanted to focus on paintings that would speak of timeless concepts that all of humanity will experience, as well as things that I wanted to bring into my own life, such as sympathy, patience, and balance. As a painter, you are meditating on the themes of your work while in the process of creating each piece. So for me, it seemed logical to explore more personal themes based on concepts I wanted to bring into my life, with the hopes that the final products would serve as visual affirmations of these concepts for me when I'd see them hanging on the wall. For as much as Maldonado tries to affirm these concepts in his work, there is one theme that he will probably never be able to paint out of his system due to his great fear of it. Though often seeming peaceful and beautiful, the Day of the Dead costumed skeletons of Brandon Maldonado are the artist's way of dealing with the ultimate reality of our mortal existence. Beyond the cultural costume of these works lies the ever-present hint of hope and a question that will someday be answered. The painter Paul Gauguin said he was going to kill himself upon the completion of what was to be his last grand painting. The painting was entitled, Where Do We Come From? What Are We? Where Are We Going? I, just like Gauguin, or anyone else for that matter, don't have the answer to these questions, and I really don't pretend to have the answers. I believe in the questions. <laughs>